Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. We're about to get things online. Jared, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, wow, that's loud again. Okay, you're here. All right, good. All right. Yeah. We'll be streaming shortly because, like, got to wait for some people to show up in chat. And I'm going to eat a few pieces of my food before, like, we start showing up. Yeah, I'm here. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I was saying, what are you going to eat? What am I going to eat? Yeah. Uh, I'm eating hot dogs wrapped in bacon with uh, hot dog buns with mayonnaise and ketchup and french fries. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I know, right? Like, it's at least it was something I was able to get with, like, the money I had left over after, like, uh, paying off the rest of that loan, stuff like that. So, we gotta wait for the viewers to show up. It'll be a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Let me try to at least, like, refresh chat. Chat settings. Damn it. Refresh chat. Let's see if anybody's, like, coming in so far once I refresh it. Nope, no one yet, so might as well just go to uh, just chatting. All right. So we're here live on the live stream. Hello, everyone, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, my fellow VTubers. I am here. Joey is here. So, uh, Joey, why don't you give your feedback first as I'm, I'm literally munching down. On some food. Um, like, what you did in the D&D &D campaign, you little troll. Oh, well, originally, before we met the dragon, the dragon had shapeshifted. Well, its original form was a hydra, and then when we met it this time, it was a dragon. Um, and so, it's a shapeshifting sort of creature, whatever it is. Um... And so, like, last game, last game we played, before you, uh, entered this time, it was, it was a, a five-headed, uh, Hydra. But, like, uh, what I did, basically, a few games back is, I made an oath to become a, an obedient servant to an evil creature. Uh, we don't know what its natural form is, because... Every time we encounter it, it, it is something else than what we previously seen. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that was, um, and I kept, I was, I messaged the DM to keep it secret from the rest of the party all the way up until today. I revealed myself as the reason why everything throughout the past games wasn't going as planned because I was doing a few side quests to make sure that everything went interrupted. Um, now, I didn't do anything to harm my party members, but I did uh, do things to mislead them, re lead them in the wrong direction to where they couldn't get, uh, uh, basically where they couldn't compete, uh, complete their quest and basically stall uh, for time until until my uh, so-called uh, leader that I aligned myself with uh, appeared to do what he what what it needed to do now, I didn't say appear because I had to phrase it differently because mm -hmm. um, I wasn't waiting for it to appear I was waiting for it to do all of its side side uh like off to the side things and then i was going to reveal myself basically when it like did everything it needed to do uh, like basically i made it to where what the next few things about whatever the next few things our, our party did 
became irrelevant since uh um I was I was just borrowing time for for like the evil entity to um I've come back into the world to make itself to no to make itself more uh difficult to apprehend. Oh, okay. Like right now, not not just not just simply appearing, but also like the reason why I say side quest because that has something to do with the topic. Um, like in other words, it was it needed. Uh, extra time to grab certain items to basically make itself more powerful uh, as an ent as a certain entity and to give it resistance to more things uh, magical things to where it's like really really bulky really really resistant to spells really really basically I was allowed giving it time to uh, acquire acquire items so that it would not by the time uh, our party encountered it uh, face to face, it would basically not die to anything due to having so many magical items that it's like super resistant or immune to a lot of things. Mm hmm. Um, and then, like, once it gained all the items that it needed to acquire to make itself really indestructible, I decided to. Uh, reveal myself as the guy who made it all possible and my party's not gonna kill me they may say they're gonna kill me but they actually need me because like as my loyalty shifts based on who the highest bidder is so if you if you were to tempt me with a much higher deal than what the evil deity is um there's a chance I might cross the evil deity down the line. Um, you mean double cross? In order to... No, well, I don't mean double cross because there's always a chance I could revert back to to aligning myself with the evil deity if he... And that's like, called a triple cross. Has a counter... Basically, if he has a counter offer that's better than yours that, that you give me. And so, like, I don't have a true loyalty, so to speak. Um, yeah, your loyalty is to yourself, basically. Yes, and well, to a degree. Like, there, there is, all, there, like, there is one thing I do have a true loyalty to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will not say, I will not say until, like, I become higher level to where, like, I can't have people use it against me. Um... Sorry, everyone. I had to check up on like my notifications on my PC. Ignore that. Um. Uh, anyways, so now I was my character was introduced at the end of the prologue. Yeah. Uh, they found my character in the boiler room. That I want to say, like, hold on, let me bring it up. So, the name that was voted upon on my Twitter account was, um, I guess not currently accepted. I can't say if it has or hasn't, I but I let them know that, hey, um... I missed a lot of what you said. Oh, sorry. It's like I said, uh, basically, from the poll, like, the name hasn't has it been accepted or it has or it hasn't I, so it's I, unconfirmed I of the name that they, what the people voted for what my character's name is going to be no no you buffered when you said uh, they found me in the and then i didn't hear the rest oh okay all right so uh they found me in the boiler room like, there was a whole task to find me. And I really did like it, everyone. Like, I really did like it. And, like, my DM's, like, he's lagging out because, like, there's a storm outside. <laughs> About to come. So, okay. yeah. And they found me in the boiler room, woke me up along with, like, six other soldiers. And we stormed to this certain area. To find this artifact to try to destroy, it backfired. 
and what was inside of the uh, box crawled on out and by the end of the prologue we found out uh oh we were tricked big bad threat is here stronger than ever and I'm the new guy with a weakened sword that needs to get the rust removed and re-enchanted. And I am the fighter, the heavy fighter, with a big old sword that has three different element attributes. Fire, ice, and lightning. Sadly, it's seriously nerfed right now. And in the D&D campaign... We're in a labyrinth right now, and I almost really, well, and I quote, failed the Tomb Raider task. As uh, I was jumping to avoid a collapsing roof of a trap on my head, and by at least one or two points of the dice roll, I dodged it. Just barely. And I will mention this. In this D&D campaign, I did not get anyone killed. My first introduction to a D&D game, and I see that as a big W, I did not get anyone killed in the game. I almost did, though, when the DM misunderstood of a non-headcanon-like scenario to talk with the team outside of the game. And he was willing to jump on that. As I was talking with the team. So, going back to that, like, were you confused on whether you should tell us to go over there or not, or... Oh, no, it was like confronting the dragon and like saying, Hey, we, we know that you leave here, but we'll eventually either find the cure that uh, fix you or we'll put you down. And they're like, No, 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 we don't want to take off the big bad dragon. Well, like, as far as campaigns go, when you take on something like a dragon, you have to be at least be level, your party members each have to be at least level eight or higher. Because, uh, like, where you have a lot of abilities available, because dragons in the game are, like... Really one powerful. The, uh, one, yeah, one of the top ten things that you could actually face. Yeah, so, and, I mean, um... Edit, if I wasn't level, careful, I, I could antagonize the big bad. Yeah, where they can basically one-shot us all in one fell swoop. Yeah, so luckily, like, I made it quite clear this was, like, not a part of the game. It was just, like, me talking a scenario. And, uh... Um, character just walked up in front of the dang thing and with not a care in the world. Yeah, yeah, you made, you made a deal with the demonic overlord. How do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> Of course you would. Of course you would. So, uh, yeah, right now, Devin the Vengeful is not decided on if it's going to be my character's name or not. Okay. Uh, well, I seem to understand possibly from the D&D. Uh, the Dungeon Master. Um, right now, they're just calling me Commander Devin, but not yeah. Devin the Vengeful. So I'm going to work that with the Dungeon Master to have him, like, understand, hey, you know, this is this is what my community voted on. Like, one person voted on this, and I'm a little disappointed, but at least somebody voted on this poll. At least somebody voted on it, and I'm so happy. Wait, didn't we only have, like, seven viewers, though, that were spectating at the time? Cause, like, uh, and here on the Twitch channel, yes. Here on the uh, Twitter channel, yes. But on my, uh, I mean, on Twitch channel, yes. Like, uh, I have seven subscribers. And I have about seven people watching the stream right now. Including, that's including you of the seven people. So there's six including you. 
Yeah, so like if there's not many viewers, like wouldn't it make sense that there's probably only one voter? Uh, one viewer? Yeah, I think that may be you right now, but these are other accounts. No, I mean one voter who voted your name. Uh, yeah, like, I if think you didn't have, I like many people. That was on uh, like Twitter slash X though, and like I've got like. Around over like forty seven people um subscribed on uh like watching my Twitter slash X. Okay, and they voted on Twitter slash uh, X. I guess uh FX. Yeah, Twitter slash X. That that's where the poll was on. Oh, that I I was gonna say I thought they did that on Twitch T V and I can say I could if it was Twitch TV, I can understand one vote, but if you have way more on uh, the yep. other one, then I, I then I would at least think there would be five votes. Yeah. If anything, like, I've been posting a lot, and I've been getting a lot more supporters, so that's the thing. I think it may have been my future co-host. Slash, uh, you know... From behind the scenes, we've been talking about. So my future co-host may have been the one that made the vote. That which I'm so glad that she did, because she show it shows she's supporting me. It shows that she cares. So uh, yeah, at least I didn't get anybody ended in the D and D campaign today. It came really close, but I'm glad I didn't. Oh, uh, like, hold on, let, let me pull up my stat paper, because, like, I want to tell, like, the freaking rolls I did to my stat were, like, so freaking good. Like, lucky. I got, I got lucky, lucky with the rolls. Let me talk about my side on this campaign. At the start of the uh, our campaign, there was uh, two people that said, uh, "Well, that was, remember the black guy, the black guy that we were with, uh, the wizard. Call him the wizard." He, yeah, the wizard. He um, at like before we even encountered the evil uh, entity, uh, he was saying, "On the one hand, we know the paladin's not going to." Uh, probably not going to align himself with with the evil entity and then on the other hand we can't really trust uh the chaos cleric is bat brat yeah they can't trust that well i'm a trickery cleric yeah um i'm basically like uh to sum it up i'm basically like a generic loki yeah basically um, you're kind of like kefka while not being kefka in final fantasy I don't really understand that. He's the boss like, character from like Final Fantasy VI from the Super Nintendo. You have to like give me details about what he represents. Cause like, uh, he's, he's a okay, like okay. okay. I'm about to tell you. Kefka is a big bad. He's a wizard with a Joker personality. He's an evil magical wizard. With a personality like Batman's biggest threat, the Joker. Yeah. That's kept up. That's as simple as I can put it. The only difference between that is, like, technically I'm not evil. I'm just... You're neutral. Mystery yeah. Maker. No, it's like, I get that. But... That's I, the way I, I see it, anyway. Psychotic, but there are, but there are just a mild amount of uh, decent things I'll do for the right price. So uh, let's go over like my character so far. So I just became okay. a fighter level six today, as I started out as level five. Uh, my human is uh, my character is variant human. Uh, my proficiency bonus right now is three. Now, when I did my rolls, these were the original numbers. I had 18 for strength, 14 for dexterity, 16 for a constitution, 10 for intelligence, 10 for wisdom, 8 for charisma, 
16 for willpower and 15 for luck. That which is now 20 strength, 14 dexterity, 16 constitution, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom, 8 charisma, 16 willpower, and 16 luck. The uh, like the uh, dice roll amplifiers, I'm gonna put it is plus five on strength, plus three on constitution, and a plus three on willpower and 16. I uh, am willpower and luck, a three on willpower and luck. My uh, armor class is chainmail, and I got 16 for chainmail. My current hit points are 55, but that's about the change as I'm level 6. And I'm going to add a um, addition where I'm, like, I'm supposed to get like 12 extra hit. Uh, 12 extra current hit points. Added on 12, to it. Uh, extra hit points. Yeah, 12. To 55. So I'm going to have like 67. When I fill out this paper, um, I fight with a great sword. So I put great sword is G R S D. My uh, attack efficiency bonus is A, and I ro I roll a one D twelve plus ten. Uh, my attacks are commander strike. Uh, maneuvering attack and rally so far. My jobs right now that I currently have are, are like styles of fighting are great weapon master with great weapon fighting. So that's what's currently on my fighter's paper uh, as of right now in my stats with my character. And we're just in the midst of the D&D battle. As the prologue just ended, the big bad has finally relieved, revealed itself at the end of the prologue. And now we're going into the second part of the story. I, I now want to talk about my feedback of, like, everyone else other than Joey here. So, Dungeon Master, my Dungeon Master, really nice guy, really kind. Love him. Uh, he's a bit twisted with his story. He likes taking it dark. He, he likes the dark. He likes the dark side of the sauce in stories. That which is not bad. But he also makes it where it's fun and engaging for everyone. The uh, slime slash rogue of the team. Uh, she generally has a character that has a good heart. But she, her character gets over her head and a little bit cocky. And she has a point to prove, but um, sometimes she bites off more than she can chew. The wizard is very smart. He's from a wizard school of, like, expertise. And, like, he can have all these spells that can read ancient knowledge, do healing, and do uh, magical things like fireball or firebolt and stuff like that. And like, that's really cool. He's really going the Joe Cat routine with that one. The paladin, the guy with the paladin, like, he comes off very reserved, uh, mm, very quiet. And there ain't nothing wrong with that, but he's a good man. And then there's Joey. Well, Joey is Joey. It's how I'm going to put you, mate. You are you. I can't be trusted. Exactly. I can't. Well, uh, that, there's a yes and no to that. Sometimes I can be trusted depending on topic. So their characters are all their own creation. And they really don't go much into their feedback of their characters. That which I think that's where the characters kind of like suffer a bit. But they don't want to feed the dungeon master too much. I mean, I've fed like well, some, but like not everything. 
Well, there's a reason for that. I can go into like a mild explanation with it. Um, if you don't reveal a lot, like all the stuff you know how to do, other players can't exploit circumstances to basically, uh, including the dungeon uh, master. Well, no, it's not including the dungeon master. The dungeon master at the get go knows everything we have. He's like got sheets and everything. We we already tell him. It's just we don't have to tell the other players around us what we can do or what we have. It's optional for us to explain as much or as little as we want to. And some of that plays into like, uh, like you know how I'm, on field how, experience uh, basically is what y'all are trying to teach me, and I got that. I, like, well, I'm trying to, like, so that's not, like, uh, that, that doesn't quite cover it. Um, oh. I'm saying, like, so you know how, how basically y'all all of a sudden found out that I was with the evil deity? Or there's, like, certain other circumstances where the players might do something equally as sketchy down the line, and they don't want you to, like... Or they may say something like their character may have a personality to withhold a few gold coins and not tell anybody so that they can, you know, yeah, some more for themselves rather than for us, us as a whole. And so there's like certain certain things that their characters can do that they may not want to like explain until like they can reap the benefits and then and then like mid game you can go oh that's what you can do. So like it like highlights uh it better highlights um the surprise uh, nature out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So as of right now, like I'm the new guy in the group. And um so my feelings on my first D and D campaign. Now I'm so glad I didn't get the team killed. Oh, that is a big W for me. I'm glad of that. Uh, but at least I can say this. They're general. You people are generally good people. I felt like I was being a little bit uh, or like you know, pushed aside at first because I was the new guy with all the other players. But it was due to, like, awaiting my time to be put into the story. And I was making a lot of, like, Oof. you know, like, ooh, big, bad, tough guy, like, mistakes with my character. Well, you would think they'd be mistakes. But I kind of planned it. Because, like, my character is supposed to be unhinged and unstable at first. And then he's supposed to calm down and, like... Uh, tone down the crazy a bit and become more level head. And at first, that's why I wanted him to get with my character, like, oh, he's been unhinged and crazy and like a, a little bit sarcastic, if not dangerous. But eventually, my character will go through development and kind of like calm his head, become more level headed and more stable. as I wish to accomplish with my character and the story going forward. As I start getting new companionships with the team and uh, solving things together. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I want to try to go with my character. Uh, my character's backstory, in a way, like, it follows Doomslayer without me not knowing it was following Doomslayer. So, allow me to explain myself. Uh, my character, um, ancient warrior from, like, so many years ago, like, centuries ago, or something like that, uh, concealed away in a, 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 a magical capsule. And one of the first things that I did that went over everyone's head, other than, like, you, Joey, is like, after 9,000 years, I have slumbered. Who dares awaken me? Where is my weapon? And, like, that was a Dragon Ball Z abridged quote from Vegeta, and, like, it went over all, like, everyone had, other than, like, Joey's and possibly the DMs, 
Because, like, DM looked like he was about to burst out laughing. <laughs> and, and that was a trip. Yeah. Yeah. He looked like he was about to burst out laughing with that. Uh, before the campaign went down, though, we were talking about Thanos and, like, Infinity War and the uh, comic book. And I just said, dude, just plain, just plain blame Disney. Blame Disney for ruining Marvel, okay? Blame them. Just watch. Disney's gonna sue me after this shit. They're gonna sue me. like, we heard what you said. Lawsuit. <laughs> like, they're gonna send the modern Mickey Mouse to my front door and be like, lawsuit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So... Thing like he's like, all right, let's not get too political into it. But he got what I was saying, like you know how woke Disney has become, and he didn't want to ruin the mood. And like I get that sometimes, like I get a little bit too passionate when I talk about stuff like this, as I'm generally disappointed with modern like televisions and movies of old time, like. Heroes and villains and anti-heroes and anti-villains, all that kind of stuff. Like, it really makes me angry. It disappoints me. It makes me angry. It makes me want to shove my 14 and a half size foot up the owner of Disney's butthole. <laughs> and that's what it makes me want to do with Disney. Like, don't get me started with Sweet Baby Ink. Because, like, I don't know what I'll do with that woman of Sweet Baby Ink. I don't know if, like, I'll knock her up and say, There, you're pregnant for the first time in your life. Deal with it. Now, that's not my child. As I don't knock her up, I just put an, in, like, injection or, like, um, somebody else's semen into her womb. I go, like, There, you have a child. Now grow up and be a person. And, yeah. Just watch, now Sweet Baby Ink's gonna attack me. <laughs> but, um... I'm under fire lately. But I'm loving it. I am love being under fire for a bit, like... It helped me out. You so, are my character to die in a hole, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... He didn't want to get too much into, like, the Disney aspect of, like, why they're ruining with uh, Avengers uh, movies in general. It's really that they didn't ruin it. They were trying to make Thanos more sympathetic. But when they made him sympathetic, they took away what's best of him. They took away the best part. The villain aspect. Just wanting death's affection. And I can see that. I do see that. That was the one thing that makes Thanos like, just such a good villain. What makes Thanos a, a good villain is obviously his ruthlessness, his evil heart, not caring about anyone other than himself, and uh, Lady Demise is how I'm going to call her. As that's the only one he can see eyes for. Supposedly. I don't think Lady Death has eyes. She has eye sockets because her uh, head is a skull, but she doesn't have eyes. Unless she puts on, like, some flesh mortal disguise. But here's the thing. Um, what Disney has done to Thanos, it's not bad, per se. It is bad, but it's not that bad. Like, Thanos could have been better by the last movie. The first movie, guess what, of Avengers, like the last two movies of Avengers fighting Thanos, the first one fighting Thanos, it was good. It was a good movie. But the second one, like, the one, th the one thing I have a problem with is Thanos' character. Like, the massive battle scene, beautiful. Love it. The visual expectations. Mwah. Icing on the cake. Okay, it was icing on the cake. But Avengers Endgame, with Thanos' character, 
at the last movie is like where everything falls apart from the first with Thanos' intentions, then following up into the second movie. Where like the Thanos of that universe gets game ended by four and then like, oh, we still need a Thanos. So we're gonna bring a Thanos from another alternate timeline to replace this Thanos to do the rest of his work. Uh, this was a bit of a retcon, as the original Thanos they had in the movie was like, they felt like was a step in the wrong direction. In the second movie, they ended that Thanos and replaced him with the Thanos that was supposed to be like the one that wanted Lady Demise. It didn't exactly work out. I'm kind of glad it didn't. But here's my gripe about the uh, first Thanos, is the character and the quick, like, damage control they did. If they were going to do this in the first place, they should have alluded to it. They should have been like, hey, so we got the feedback of the first Avengers Endgame movie, part one. Y'all didn't like it. So now we're going to be like, okay, we're going to lead up to possibly what's going to happen to this Thanos and then some new threats coming along. Now, I can see that a bit dangerous, but... Let's just say a month before the movie's, like, global release, they show Thanos in a cheeky way coming, like, so the Thanos of that universe is gone, and then you see, like, a new Thanos come through a time portal, being a little cheeky with it, and going, like, you may have destroyed this one, my child, in this timeline, but I truly inevitable. That's what they should have done with. That's what they should have gone with leading up to the second movie where there'd be less rights and more of a, a war of an understanding. This is due to poor marketing and understanding of what the people wanted in the first place. Wow, where did that come from? All right, by uh, my anger and frustration on writing a good villain. <laughs> so, yes, uh, this could have all been fixed by the second Endgame movie if they did something cheeky like that. They did not, and it was what really got a lot of people upset. Now, me and the like Dungeon Master were talking about it, so that's why I want to touch up on this. Uh, the rest of the people... They, like, I'm so glad they looked at me and, like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll hear you out. We'll give you a chance, you know, like, we'll give you a chance. We'll give you a time to shine. And they did. They gave me my time to shine. And now, like, I'm so happy that they are giving my me my time to shine amongst them. Now, do I think that my character's possibly going to survive through the campaign. Well, the way I'm playing and rolling at the point, I don't think so. Because, like, all my good numbers came out at first, but now everything's going downhill. Well, like, if you're mostly concerned with, like, your die rolls, that's why I have the luck feed, which you can also take if you choose to uh, as level 6. Which means you can any any uh, d twenty roll that you can that you make if you uh, don't make a good roll when you roll for it, then you can re roll and you can take whichever of those two was the best roll. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that's if you get back on the team. Also, yeah, and you can also do that with your initiative roll too. So, like, if you make a terrible. Roll, initiative rolls are for order uh, that we do attack in. Uh, I mean, order of turns. But if you make a, a bad roll on your initiative, you could also re-roll for that uh, and take whichever of the two rolls. You could take your first roll or you can take the result of your second roll for that. Um, 
So that's kind of forgiving. I really like that. Um, didn't know that at first. Yeah, that's what that's the feat I have. I don't know very much. Like, uh, I see a roll that I don't like that that requires a twenty time to die, and I just say no. I'm gonna re-roll, and then like ninety percent of the time, the uh, second roll ends up better. Uh, so where like basically I only have like a ten percent chance of having a roll, result roll that I don't like, um, rather than just being subjected to the first roll that I make. Um, but yeah, and also it also helps for parrying attacks. If a creature, uh, if a creature to, um, chooses you as an attack target. You can roll a d20, um, and, and what it does, uh, is when you roll the d20, before your DM tells you what the, uh, creature attacking you rolled, you can decide whether you want the DM, whether you want the creature's, uh, roll to be whatever you rolled on the die, or whether you want it to be whatever the roll the creature did. So basically, you can rig, uh, how good their attack against you is as well. Um, oh, wow, well, so, like, okay, hold on a minute. Um, it's my co-host. I don't know, like, I maybe only be able to get a bus ticket, uh, for? Uh, yeah, so, like, but, uh, like, I don't think she answered back. Oh, wait a minute, I, yeah, I'm in the blue, she's in the gray when it comes to my cell phone. Okay, so... Please try to understand I was just asking for the money for a train ride because I was only able to get free time on a train. I think I will be able oh, to I I will think I'll be able to think about my future with you on a train, but I will plan some further projects to see well oh, far further in the future and that will be that will be happening once in the condition I'm alone. And you know I am there. My I, busy life, I will start again with a new path on a new journey. I hope you understand what I'm thinking. I'm not saying I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the journey. It's just a free up time and space in my busy day. I will oh, get my brain fresh for another for a further journey. Okay, so, like, that's cryptic. So, what that means is, uh, well, she wants to come on a train, and if she can't come on a train, then she'll meet you at a later date and time. Oh, okay. That, that's what it means, is very simplified. Um, that means, like, basically, she'll try and plan to meet you some other day if she can't make the train. Um, oh, uh, yeah, because, like, I can't get the money right now. And, like, I told her, like, I'll go up there on a bus, help pick her up, and bring her to Texas while bringing her a slice of Texas. But it seems she doesn't want a, a bus ride, that which, okay, I understand. Well, uh, it's... It most likely to do with like you'll probably have to it ha might have to do with like because you might have to take multiple she th might think you have to take multiple buses instead of just one to get okay to that a, that makes a lot of sense so like where, where the train you wouldn't have to switch trains you would just ride one train to get down here um, okay hold on a minute like I understand we can reschedule maybe in two weeks if I can get the money by then for a train ride for you to be here. Right now I'm doing everything I can to get the money, but uh, this is where I ask for you to be patient and I will try my best as fast as I can. To get the money as fast as I can. I wish you can be at the Comic Con with me and my uh, comrade slash moderator 
But I understand your concerns. And I'll see as to how fast I can get the money within two to three weeks. My humblest apologies. But I will get it done as fast as possible. Take care of my sweet little dragon blossom. Alright, so I sent her that message. She'll probably contact me tomorrow. She's getting and she's trying to get some sleep. So it's like Okay. For her, so and like for me too, but I'm still like on live stream talking about D and D, so we're gonna go on to like ten thirty. Or at least ten. Okay. So, uh, okay. yeah, my first D and D campaign for me was a lot of fun, and it was a big experience. So, right now, I want to mention one last thing that was earlier today on our earlier live stream. Everyone, uh, the edited video that we I was working on will not be the finished prod product. What I was working on was merely the beginning, and I'm going to further edit it and make it uh, with a lot more, like, uh, sound edits and a little bit more visual edits, such as I'm going to find some, um, like, silhouettes of Smiths. For the blade, of course, I'm going to put the blade in the art when it's being forged. Along with the alchemy area, I'm going to like get some wizards for the alchemy area. And then I'm going to get some old-fashioned type, like a medieval scientist. For that, for the science area of the medieval science image I'm going to go with. But y'all got, like, a brief understanding of the ed hard editing of the video. And it's not going to be uploaded right away. Because I still got a lot more editing to do. And the project is not done. But when it is done, you have my word. And it's going to be better than anything I've done previously. And it'll really stand out from my previous works. As the origin of the Starbreaker Saber is supposed to get everyone involved or interested in what I'm making. As it's one small step for a story, but one giant leap for a legendary saga is how I'm going to put it. As, as an editor, as a content creator, and as a VTuber, you're always constantly learning and becoming a better content creator. Including that with streaming. Now, with all this now mentioned, and out of the way, this weekend... It seems I may do a bit of a longer stream this Saturday. Or more than two or three hours. I may go with five. Uh, just because, like, I now know I can't do a 24 or 48 hour stream with my PC build up. And it's, it'll strain my PC's build. That's the last thing I need to do is destroy my PC to try to accomplish this. So as of right now, it seems my co-host may be on the side for like at least two or three more weeks. I know it's not what she wants to hear, but at least she's working on the 3D model and getting it done on the side. Of all the stuff I gave her. And I'm also planning to get her a summer beach outfit as well that I can find that will be really nice looking while being very, very beautiful. As, yes, yeah, I want her to voice this character, but I want her to feel 
beautiful and comfortable while voicing Rachel, while being Rachel. I want her to be, you know, true to herself and true to the character. If that makes sense to, like, everybody watching and even Joey here. I don't want her to feel out of place with the character, but I want her to, like, feel like she's coming into the mold with the character while having a bit of, like, an expressionary uh, feel for it, while also, like, not only expressing the model, but expressing herself through the model. I don't want her to feel awkward or trapped with it. I want her to express herself, but with, like, at least my feedback with the model. And why, do you have, why did you do the robot with the tongue out? I have no idea. Okay, you just felt like doing something. All right. So, yeah. Yes. Like... I don't want to limit her creativity, but I want her and me to work on it together, is what I'm saying. So that's what's important to me. I know it's important to her, and that's where, like, obviously partnerships, like, rather it's VTubing in real life, VTubing or even real life partnerships, where you have to get along. Partnerships only work out if you work together. One person can't be in charge of everything, and the other one can't be in charge of nothing. You need to work together to have a relationship work. If you don't work together, it all falls apart. And I don't want this for her or me or the content we want to create together. It's just how I feel of how I want her to express herself through the model while having my like feedback on it and I feel like that's important because like I was originally creating the model at first and I got the first few outfits for it but I also want her to express herself with it so, from my first D&D campaign to, like, now my co-host mentioned that it may be a little bit longer, to even that of the full-on story of the Legend of the Starbreaker Saber being put on just a little bit more, to have a bit more refinement, and have it stand out from, like, other things, because, like, Guess what? I'm going to put, like, the suns and the planet through, um, like, what was the program again? Hold on. Uh, yeah, Wallpaper Engine, to have it come off better, design of the planet and the two suns, like the Hollow Dead Sun and, like, Dwarf Star. I want to make that look good for the animation. I want, that, I want that to make it look like it looks like it belongs. As beforehand, was the finished product. So, yeah, there's a lot I'm doing right now and attempting to do. As I don't know, like, if I'll be streaming Saturday, actually. If I'm going to put all, like, pedal to the metal on the video, I think streaming may be pulled off tomorrow. For this video to get done. And the vision I have for it. And I think that's kind of important right now. And know the VTube community is expecting something out of me. And I want it to be good. My fellow VTubers, I know they're watching while not watching. Engaging while not engaging. They're waiting, but they're becoming a bit impatient in my second year. I know this. I can feel this in my bones. My fairy being. I can feel this. And I need to get this done. The last thing I want to cover is the incident. Yes, I reported the degenerate, Mr. Foxy, 
two times over. Now, for this to literally go through YouTube systems, takes two to three weeks for them to look over everything that was presented with a fine tooth and comb before making the final decision. It's how YouTube's algorithm system works when it comes to stuff like this, to reports. It takes time for them to take the report in and do it and issue it out and get it done with. I know he's still on my heels with his community and I have been reporting his, his so-called fans for doing false information on my channel and it seems they have been dealt with through that at least through their official channels so right now they're being somewhat silent but that doesn't mean nothing because they can easily come back with another like freaking youtube account or google account or whatever to uh, try again i will keep an eye on my videos for these uh, goofy little negative goobers uh, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls my fellow VTubers, and Joey, uh, thank you for joining us for this small little, like, big, obviously, a live stream of a one-hour live stream. It's literally, like, 56 minutes and 12 seconds going a little bit harder, a little bit longer. But, I would have to say, the D&D, my first campaign, was a lot of fun. I learned a lot of things. And I still got a lot to learn. So I will talk about my next D&D &D campaign in just about two weeks when it goes down in the same fashion late a Friday night. Okay. What? I'm back. Okay, you're back. So, yeah, I'm just about to close the stream. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, so I was letting them know, like, uh, in two weeks, I'll talk about the second D&D &D campaign on a Friday night. And, like, you know, what I did and how I did. And, like, you know, if I screwed up somewhere or not officially. So, um, everyone, like I said, you know, the stream's coming to a close. Don't forget to support me on my YouTube, my Twitter, my Twitch.tv my blogger Facebook, and other social media. I thank y'all so much for joining me and Joey here on this live stream. We are Ali. Thank you so much, and good night. Anything you have to say, Joey? Yes, after the live stream, I need to talk to you still. Oh. Oh, okay, did I screw up? No. Oh, okay, like, all right. Like, for, for, like, Comic-Con reasons. Oh, Comic-Con reasons. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. All right. We're done, everyone. See ya.